Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Neonatal Resuscitation, Episode 4, Neonatal Algorithms and Special Considerations. During this episode, participants will receive an overview of the NRP and the NRP algorithms and receive an overview of the STABLE program. Additionally, after watching this episode, participants will understand common complications in dealing with premature infants and understand common concerns surrounding multiple births. There are a couple of courses offered in the community uh, for EMS providers. And the first uh, course that I will mention is the NRP, um, which is, uh, stands for the Neonatal Resuscitation Program. It's a program sponsored by the American Academy of Pediatrics in collaboration with the American Heart Association. Uh, so it's a national program um, that is offered um, in uh, select hospitals. Uh, and uh, this, through this course um, uh, that is open to not only uh, EMS providers but also nurses and physicians, um, the providers learn about um, newborn resuscitation after a delivery. Um, because it's neonatal resuscitation, um, uh, the skills that a provider learns during this uh, program um, uh, is also for uh, neonates of all ages, um, so usually up to about a month of age. There is some overlap with the Pediatric Advanced Life Support course. Um, so through uh, neonatal resuscitation, providers uh, learn how to assess the infant and uh, the steps that are needed in order to stabilize and or resuscitate if necessary the infant. So um, uh, oxygen administration, uh, chest compressions, uh, medications, and then more advanced um, type of topics as, as such as um, what to do with a extremely premature infant, uh, what to do when um, the questions of viability uh, arise. When it comes to resuscitating a newborn infant, there is a basic algorithm just like you would find in PALS or ACLS or ATLS. This is the NRP algorithm. Basically, it starts with the initial assessment of the infant once the baby is born. And this is the, the trickiest part I find is that you actually have to uh, wait a little time to see what the baby is doing. We all want to you know, get things going as fast as possible, and that's certainly very appropriate, but you have to realize that your timing during assessment is, is critical. What you need to do initially is when the baby is born, warm the baby and stimulate them. Uh, the baby is wet and can lose a great deal of their body heat very, very, very quickly, especially since you're dealing with a situation that is not perhaps the optimal environment for delivery of a baby. Of course, you might be walking into a household where the baby has already been born, uh, therefore that child is at even greater risk for already having some difficulties with exposure. So your first step is going to be again to, to dry the baby and to stimulate the baby and then check to see if the baby's color and if they're breathing and if they have a heart rate. Uh, the heart rate of the newborn baby needs to be greater than 100 for you to feel uh, reassured that this baby is likely doing well. If the baby is under 100 and you've already done a great deal of stimulation of the infant and a period of 30 seconds has gone by, or of course if the baby has had no respiratory effort at this point, you will need to make some interventions. And that first intervention is going to be with regards to the baby's airway. You're going to want to start uh, either supplemental oxygen or if you have the ability, positive pressure uh, airway ventilation with a bag valve mask of this baby. Again, it's very difficult to uh, wait a period of time, but you need to give a full 30 seconds of airway support before you would move on to the next step. After that 30 seconds of support, if at any point you find that the baby's heart rate goes below 60, that would be an indication that you would need to start chest compressions. Uh, there is a wonderful program out there called the STABLE program, S-T-A-B-L-E, and that's actually an acronym standing for SUGAR, that is evaluate the baby's blood glucose, uh, T for temperature, temperature again of the infant, A is for airway, B is then for blood pressure, L standing for laboratory studies, and then E standing for emotional support. So now you have this brand new family, and yet the delivery didn't exactly happen how they anticipated, so they're going to need additional comforting and support as you travel to the hospital. You note this algorithm is different than your basic resuscitation algorithm in that it does not start with airway. So the critical point here is that it's uh, meant to be your post-resuscitation additional care during transport. Uh, to the appropriate care facility. This is also used in rural communities when a baby needs to be transferred to a higher level of care. So specific neonatal transport teams uh, will often be trained in this uh, methodology. 
I encourage everyone to uh, seek out the resource of the NRP program and for those advanced providers interested, the stable program uh, and maintain your certification and of course uh, follow the regional protocols in your area with regards to specifics of the neonatal resuscitation when you encounter a live birth in the field. For more information regarding the neonatal resuscitation program, please visit www.aap.org forward slash NRP. For more information on the STABLE program, please visit www.stableprogram.org. The official definition for a full-term infant is an infant who is greater than 37 weeks gestation. Um, so anywhere between 37 and 40 weeks uh, gestation. Um, and uh, for our premature infants, um, it's uh, any, anybody who is less than 37 weeks. Uh, sometimes, even though an infant is born at 37 weeks, um, they can have um, uh, some of the similar issues that premature infants um, may have. Uh, and the most common types of uh, problems are related to uh, respiratory distress um, and, uh, and whether or not there is sufficient surfactant or whether or not um, the fluid from the lungs are cleared properly. Um, uh, so that is the most common type of uh, problem that you would encounter in an infant who is on the borderline of um, being premature and um, full term. Um, when we go, go to the smaller babies or the less mature infants, um, the gestational age where people accept uh, limits of viability is still controversial and it, it varies uh, across the nation depending where you are in the country. Uh, generally speaking, limits of viability uh, uh, can range anywhere from 23 to 24 or even 25 weeks. There are some hospital centers that uh, would elect to resuscitate infants um, between 22 and 23 weeks. However, statistically um, speaking, infants who are born at less than 23 weeks with good dating, uh, the mortality uh, is practically 100%. And so when you're in the field and you're encountered in a situation where the dating is not clear and the, and the mother thinks the baby is at about uh, 23 weeks, um, uh, it's, it becomes really problematic in terms of what to do for this infant. And um, generally speaking, you can, after the infant is born, you could uh, do a quick assessment in, term, uh, in terms of how, assessing how mature the infant looks um, by uh, uh, looking at the physical features of the infant. Um, however, if, when, uh, whenever you're in doubt, it's probably better to uh, resuscitate the infant and then have um, more specialized providers make that decision in terms of whether or not to continue. Um, once the baby arrives at the hospital. Maintaining normal body temperature in the premature infants is especially important, uh, especially since um, their outer layer of the skin is even thinner and not as functional as um, full-term uh, uh, newborns. And so in keeping an infant warm, you would do the same types of measures that you would with any other full-term infant. However, um, you can, in addition to warming, drying, uh, stimulating, and pla placing the baby skin to skin with the mother, you can also um, take either uh, a, a Ziploc bag or a saran wrap and wrap the baby, um, ex exposing the head area um, so that the baby could breathe, but wrapping the body in saran wrap um, to prevent evaporative um, heat loss. Another uh, special consideration for premature infants um, is that they're at increased risk for uh, intraventricular hemorrhage, which is uh, bleeding around the ventricles in the brain. And usually this uh, uh, is caused by um, overstimulation of the infant or placing the infant in a position where the head, at the level of the head is lower than the body, the level of the body. And uh, just basic maneuvers um, associated with resuscitation can place um, premature infants at increased risk for bleeding in the brain. For example, uh, aggressive suctioning or um, positive pressure ventilation um, uh, can be additional risk factors. Um, uh, another uh, consideration for premature infants is that their glucose uh, stores, glucose and glycogen stores in the body are even less than uh, their full-term counterparts. And so now you have a premature infant who already has increased 
oxygen demands, most likely related to respiratory distress um, due to immature lungs and also due to um, temperature regulation. And, uh, and so now, now an infant who, who is premature uh, will um, use up all their energy stores a lot faster than a full-term infant. If you are anticipating um, delivery of uh, twins, triplets, or um, more than three babies, then uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you have enough equipment for multiple infants and enough providers to care for each infant. Um, in terms of the resuscitation or stabilization process of uh, uh, twins or triplets, usually you apply the same principles uh, uh, of neonatal resuscitation as with any other infant. So making sure that um, you have a, a, an appropriate airway and breathing or ventilation and circulation. Um, once the um, infants arrive, uh, arrive to the nursery or the hospital, then uh, their care in the hospital may differ from other, um, from other infants. Um, however, in the field, a, you may find that the infants may look a little bit smaller in size. They tend to be delivered uh, uh, more prematurely uh, and they don't go to term uh, because there are multiple uh, infants involved. After watching this episode, participants should now be familiar with the NRP and STABLE programs and understand that these programs are open to all EMS providers. Participants should also recognize that infants less than 37 weeks are considered premature and as such they are less able to compensate for any problems in their transition as well as being more prone to additional complications such as intraventricular hemorrhage. Lastly, participants should understand that infants associated with multiple births are more likely to be premature and that they should ensure that there are enough providers and equipment to care for the additional infants.